if there was a game that brought you into a devastating post-apocalyptic world like this, combined it elements of Project Zomboid and They Are Billions, okay, those two games, merge them kind of together, give you a more I Am Legend feel for things, okay, gave you good narratively driven story and uh, allowed you to play all of this stuff in a survival oriented colony management game that could take place in your hometown would you play it if w w would you watch me play it <laughs> uh, because that's what this is infection free zone kind of combines a whole bunch of ideas and it comes out pretty well i think so far uh so far anyway this is the alpha let's go ahead and hit new game i wasn't kidding you can have it be in your hometown you can have it be anywhere you want it to be uh <clears throat> they have some recommended locations over here on this side and then there are some downloaded locations that you've already loaded maps for on this side uh, which i have covered up right now because i I'm, everybody everybody's gonna load their hometown here everybody's gonna load where they live man uh so how do you want to how do we want to play this right well i'm gonna choose if you choose a really densely populated area like for example i chose ho chi minh city uh it it gives you a warning that's like hey by the way this was really populated so it's gonna ramp the difficulty way up just letting you know <laughs> okay uh are you sure you want to proceed is what they kind of say uh you could also choose locations that are too rural and it won't let you do it because there's not enough buildings and they just don't want you to have a bad experience uh, so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go to my home state of michigan i'm gonna click somewhere in the middle here because i'm gonna choose a, a, a little small town uh, not lansing but we're gonna, a little small town north of lansing and we're gonna go up to college town malt pleasant michigan all right i grew up around here not here but around here i know the city pretty well and uh, I'd like to experience what it's like in Mall Pleasant. So here we go. We're going to do it this way. And this is a, a loaded map. Like, you know, this we, we've seen this type of thing before where they load real maps and they generate buildings and stuff on real maps. I love it. I think it's a really cool thing that they're doing here. And uh, I think I'm going to choose this map tile right here. This looks like a fine place. If I go in here, this gets into like campus housing university stuff like you know fire up chips this is a cmu uh really the whole town is cmu man uh but i think this right here is a pretty good balance because i get a little bit i dip into the university over there in the extended area uh the the main small square here is where the map is going to load initially and then the areas that are beyond this is your extended map where you get to play uh as well so i think this right here is a really good mixture of everything that i would want in a map so I'm going to choose this tile here, and this is where I'll ultimately end up playing. Uh, now, it can choose game customization at the moment. And this alpha version, you can't change the zone name or the starting month. I am going to leave the tutorial events on. Everything is fully voiced, and it's actually pretty well done. Um, no, a lot of times, voice stuff doesn't work real well. Okay? Robin Hood. We saw that earlier. Yeah. Uh, but this one way better uh you can choose how many people you want to start with okay now you're going to have other groups and survivors and stuff that are going to come in and join you over time if you can find them and you know they're still alive uh and you know not trying to eat your brains then uh they can join you if you want to start with more people it makes the difficulty easier and you can start with less people of course which makes the difficulty harder same thing with resources do you want to find more or less resources when you do scavenge them you can kind of alter that for the difficulty that you want and then finally your hordes number one being like the 100 standard default setting but you can go down to like 0.8 of what you would normally get 0.6 of what you would normally get or you can ramp it up if you want to as well so if you're in a really highly populated area maybe you can make it a little easier by bringing it down uh, because hordes are gonna if you have more people in that zone it stands to reason there's gonna be more infected right uh, i'm gonna leave it as one pretty much everything here is a default right in the middle and uh let's go ahead and begin it is gonna take a little bit of time for you to generate a map for this because remember it is generating a map from a real location the world as we know it is gone what we called the mad virus appeared out of nowhere it made people turn extremely violent, aggressive, and unrestrainable. Soon later, the infected became bloodthirsty, more like vampires than human. There was chaos, panic, and war for survival. Desperate people were just as dangerous as the virus itself. Even our loved ones could become a threat. The infection spread quickly throughout the entire globe 
every region, every country, every city. Drastic measures were taken to get rid of the infected, but they all failed. The last chance for those who seemed immune was to hide in underground shelters, ones that we improvised in garages and basements, loaded with food, water, and air filtration systems. These were the places where we survived, sealed from the outside. For so long, we waited for any signal, any info that a cure had been found, or the situation stabilized. Instead, we listened as the world grew quiet. Our resources were becoming depleted. Life support systems were failing. And just as we were losing all hope, we received a distant call. To all survivors, the infection is in decline. Seek others and rebuild. This was the impulse we needed. There were others out there. We could come back to the surface. No more hiding. From the ruins of the old world, we will build our new home. So that's how the game starts. That's the premise for everything. It's very I Am Legend-like, right? All right, so this is our map. And what the game wants us to do right now is choose an HQ. A couple of notes about choosing your HQ, because it actually is pretty important uh, in your experience. You're going to have a bad experience if you choose a bad HQ, okay? For starters, when you're defending your HQ and you're shooting from within the building, the shots originate from the center of the building. So if your weapon, for example, has a radius that brings you to this far, and this is how far you can shoot, if the if the if the horde, if the infection is attacking your building over here, you're not going to be able to defend it from in the building. You're going to have to come out and risk people to shoot them. Okay? So you don't want to choose a super big building like this to be very difficult to defend. Now there's pros and cons to picking big buildings. You get more storage capacity up front. You get higher amounts of living quarters. So, for example, you may not have to adapt more buildings for, you know, housing very quickly because you can house everybody in the building. The idea is, of course, you want everybody to be not underground anymore. You want them to be up in the real world. Okay? So, the Salvation Army would not be a good HQ for me, in my opinion. It's just too big. And on top of that, there's other problems like line of sight issues where you can't necessarily see uh, past all these buildings that are surrounding it. Now, we can break these buildings down, but in general, you don't want to have a building that's too big to defend. That's where I'm getting with this. So Sherwin-Williams is off the table for me. However, Cops and Donuts. And these are real locations. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this like, yes, the Salvation Army is definitely down the road from Jimmy John's, that kind of thing, right? Uh, we, I, I, I know all these different places. It's crazy <laughs> to see all this stuff happening. The radio station here, there's a market. This is university stuff right here happening in CMU and everything. Uh, very, very cool. So uh, I'm going to choose, just down the road from Blaze Pizza, obviously, uh, I'm going to choose Cops and Donuts because I actually used to work for these cops. I know who they are personally, and uh, they're, they're fine people, okay? Not, this, this restaurant's not the original. The original is uh, about a 20-minute drive to the north, uh, but this one here is, uh, is actually a newer location that didn't exist when I lived there. Uh, okay, so I'm going to choose this building. Now, I just got done saying line of sight issues, right, in that having too many buildings right by you is going to limit your line of sight in the early parts of the game okay and this building's not too big right i can defend this this is this is fine um in the early parts of the game your hor the hordes that you're dealing with are not that strong we have time to for example break down all these tiny buildings around us to free up space and get the inventory i uh, get the resources from those buildings we have time to do that and that will solve the the problems that way so i'm going to pick this building uh, as my headquarters. Okay. So, first thing. Operator, this is first squad leader. We made our way out. The neighborhood looks deserted. We'll have to scavenge the nearby buildings for any useful resources. All right. So, I obviously, I have tutorial events on, and that's good. I'm okay with that. Uh, they're actually pretty well done. In fact, if I linger here and I don't click the button for a little bit, this guy's going to be like, uh, dude, are you there? And... Sometimes there's like variable responses that are not, that are going to uh, show up here that are not actually fully voiced. And those will just be like these mumbles. <laughs> so okay. there you Find go. As as okay. We're paused. 
we can turn on scavenge view with V. This is going to show us every building and whether or not we've searched it. So a question mark means we don't know what's inside any one of these buildings and in many, in many of these buildings, all of these buildings can be searched and eventually can be if you're playing long enough. Uh, but any one of these can have a horde in them. Any one of these can have a certain number of infected in them. Smaller buildings tend to have a smaller number, but not necessarily. Larger buildings could potentially have larger amounts. Like if you're in, say, a shopping mall area uh, with lots of parking lots and stuff could potentially be an issue, right? So keep that in mind uh, that where the population was is uh, where they could be. If I zoom out, we get the tactical map. And this is going to tell me essentially what we're dealing with here. Just small pleasant, man. Yeah, it's kind of nuts, man. So mission is basically a split between the college and commercial areas and uh, university housing and then uh, just regular normal housing and stuff. So mission, uh, most people are like living over in this area. This is a, a residential zone. And then you have the college, the campus and all that stuff over here on this side. OK, so what we want to do first and foremost is we want to find canned food at the top of the screen. We have 23 canned food. We also have other types of food as well. So we can create rations from a variety of different uh, materials, mostly stuff that we're going to grow on our own. Bags of grain, for example, would allow us to do that. Uh, we also have meat that we could do as well. So raw meat, like from chickens, we can get like a chicken coop going. Um, bags of grain, that allows us to create rations. That is more efficient than people eating the canned food. Canned food is like preserved and stuff too. Rations can go bad. So we want them to eat those first. Uh, we have ammo. That's obviously ammunition for our weapons. How many weapons we currently have? We're currently dealing with six pistols, but we also have the ability to have uh, long range rifles as well as semi-automatic rifles, as well as shotguns. We have fuel as a resource, which we're gonna find once we find a car uh, or figure out once we have a car. And then we have also construction materials. That is wood, metal, bricks, basic tools and advanced tools. And those two last ones are really difficult to find. So we're going to want to get down the research tree pretty quickly to try to make our own tools. Uh, okay. So if I hover over my team here, you can see that this is the diameter or the radius, if you will, of where they can shoot as long as they have line of sight. Notice how it's not a complete circle because certain structures are obstructing line of sight. Operator. I'm going to select the squad and I'm going to go and search through these buildings first. The reason for that is because I actually want to clear these buildings out. I want to start breaking them down and clear this area out so that I can see really well on this side. Um, I'm not going to claim this building yet. Um, eventually, I do want to claim this building because I think it's a really convenient looking building um, and it's kind of attached here, which is cool. Um, but I'm not going to claim it yet because if I claim it, then the infected will attack it and I can't defend it very well. Again, line of sight. So I want the infected to have to come around the building in the early in the early days. The infection is not going to be large enough to take down my HQ uh, unless, of course, I just like let them have it. Uh, OK, so this squad, I'm going to tend to this there. building. Then I'm going to create a new squad. We have 40 survivors, right? 40 citizens and any of them can be turned into a squad so I can create a new squad Operator. that's going to dip into my supply of citizens. But I get an extra squad that I can control and Operator. move around the map. I'm going to have them look in this building because I want to tear this building down first, I think. OK, we're going to have them go off and do the things. Now, in the meantime, we have 32 citizens that are just sitting there doing nothing. We can put them to work. I want them to scavenge wood, bricks and metal so that we can set up basic defenses. Uh, we can set up fence, uh, yeah, fences, uh, towers to, to look out of and shoot out of, etc. So we can go like this and I'm going to say I want to get the wood. Let's have them get the wood from this area first, relatively close. Uh, we'll have you get bricks from first. We're going to use like little tiny areas like this. There's certain buildings that are just crumbled and there's bricks there that we can uh, harvest. So we kind of want to do uh, that relatively like, things that are close by. We would want to do first. So I think I'm going to just take. Yeah, how about this right here? Uh, and this one's a bigger stack, though. That's 25 bricks there. Uh, this one here is going to give me up to 60. So that's pretty good. All right, 36 people up to 36 people can harvest from that. So we're going to go ahead and do that too. All right, that's going to put everybody to work, except for the part where I also want to start breaking down buildings because I can get resources for that too. Um, to get metal, we want to look for things like street lights, broken down cars, etc. So there's street lights over here on this side. We can start pulling the, the metal off of that as well. We still have two people remaining that aren't doing anything and that's okay. I think two people is, is fine. 
Okay, so we're going to move through each of these buildings. And as we do that, they're going to search the building as well as scavenge. It is really uncommon for you to have any infected in buildings that are really close to your HQ. Uh, they tend to spawn farther away. Usually, I mean, they might be as close as this one or this one. Uh, but you're not usually going to get any infected in the immediate vicinity of your HQ. Waiting orders. Operator. All right. So each one of these people can hold one item. And that's what we just saw there. Sir, the crates are in the HQ. We have to think what to scavenge first. It will be best to check some shops or warehouses. Yeah, we'll be doing that. Okay. I'll point you where to go. So each one of the survivors here can hold one unit of goods, whatever that actually happens to be. Uh, so in that case, they filled up. Over here, two of them are holding something. We have a spot left for two of them. When they fill up, they can come back to HQ, drop them off, and they end up in our inventory. We can later on uh, retrofit some of these buildings you know, uh, adapt some of these buildings to be warehouses and stuff for us. And then they only need to bring it to a warehouse. They don't necessarily need to bring it to HQ. Uh, okay, so I'm going to keep doing this and keep searching buildings. Chief, I will speak on behalf of the other citizens. Let us go and adapt the buildings to suitable shelters so we won't spend a single more night underground. So that's an important thing we have to do as well. Yes, that Clear. sounds like a good idea. We have to adapt buildings so that we can turn them into shelters. At the moment, our HQ is capable of housing 27 people, but we have 40 citizens. We need to get everybody above ground. That's gonna really help morale. At the moment, all of our people are happy, but that can change. 17% of our populations don't have a shelter. 48% is happening because it's finally out. Everyone's elated. Yes, we're finally on the surface and that's making them happy, but that's gonna wear off after three days. And then you have to make them happy in like keeping them fed, keep making them feel safe, etc. Um, looks like we have a pharmacy right here. I don't remember there being a pharmacy here. This might be CV. I don't know where is this. Can't see the names of the buildings anymore. This is Preston Street. Oh, anyway, doesn't matter. Uh, the point is, <laughs> it doesn't matter whether it's the real building or not. Point is, there's a pharmacy right there, and we can get uh, medicine from there, Reporting. which is great. As we play, you'll notice the time is flowing. Okay sunset sunrise the stuff is seasonal it's going to change as the seasons change as well so the winter times might be a bit darker usually we'll also have periods of time where there's storms and if it's really dark and it's stormy time you might have less light outside and therefore could allow the infected to walk around during the day it makes things more hazardous likewise you might get times where it's a full moon and it's really bright at night and the infected won't want to come out when it's really bright so they'll stay in the dark they have extreme light sensitivity think of it like i am legend right um so they don't want to come out clear. all right so as the sun begins to go down they're going to warn us sir the sun is getting low we don't know what's going to happen during the night we can continue our scavenging operations in the dark but that will be way more dangerous than waiting until sunrise yeah so if I say get back to HQ, they'll they'll all come back to HQ. Uh, all of the the squads will come back to HQ. If I say continue, we'll keep going, which is what I want to do. But the civilians will still come back anyway. Carry on. We need those resources. Sir, it is too dangerous for unarmed civilians to work after nightfall. Everyone will return home. But I'm in charge, I thought. Okay, let's be safe. Okay, mom. Anyway, so I've still got two squads. I'm going to keep looking through these buildings because I want to get them all validated and cleared. So make sure that there's nothing in there. Uh, and then once I've searched a building and scavenged it, I can then start to break it down. So to break it down, again, this is an alpha. So keep in mind, there are going to be bugs. There are going to be things that aren't quite right. So if you're playing this game yourself and you're wondering, how do I break down buildings? It's because the button is hidden. <laughs> it's just not showing up. So... We have this button here, which allows us to adapt a building. And I can choose whether I want it to be a warehouse or a shelter. Later on, I can make a house. Um, or right next to it, in this invisible button, it's uh, you can deconstruct the building. And you'll get bricks, metal, and wood from deconstructing the buildings as well. And that's ultimately what I want to do. I don't want to obstruct my vision. I want to be able to shoot them before they get here. So I'm going to mark this building for deconstruction and as well as this building for deconstruction. Uh... Wait, let, me, let me see. What do we got here? Uh, this has 35 resource capacity. It's actually bigger than I thought it was. 
this building is. Yeah, I def I want to keep this one. So this one's going to get get broken down as well, okay? Okay. Now, my squads are still out, and that's not a big deal. They are armed. We can handle ourselves, but we will want to get somebody in HQ because if they start coming from this side, we need to be able to see that. And uh, the nighttime is going to happen right now. So if we zoom out this far, as soon as there's a horde somewhere, my guys are going to call it out. So there we, we can see them. So we have vision of these guys. Sir, we just saw a group of infected. They might not be aware of our presence. Right. So we can either say get ready or hide. Get ready to fight. Okay. So like I said, the first horde is not that big of a deal. They're pretty small. And there's going to be more than just that one. They're all over the place and they're spawning from different buildings and they're moving around all the time, every, every night and everything. Um, and if you start making noise, as you start making noise, and as we start defending ourselves more and more with these loud weapons, the hordes will hear this and they're going to make their way towards us. So you're going to constantly get hordes every night. You're probably going to get some that are charging towards you because they're hearing you. They could hear you shooting. All right. So they're like, oh, hey, cool. There's sh shots over there. I'm going to go investigate that. And then they can kind of pinpoint your location. Uh, a lot of these guys also keep in mind, they grew up around here. They were here when this whole thing happened. Uh, so they kind of have awareness still of their surroundings, especially since they've been living here for a while on the surface. So if we start changing things, it's going to look odd and they're going to come investigate that too. But at the moment, we could just sit here really silently and not do anything. I think we have enough buildings here that's kind of obstructing vision, but they're still going to kind of look at this and go, hmm, there are trees downed over here. There's that building that's kind of been destroyed a little bit. And that might get them to uh, come investigate us anyway. We'll see. So I'm going to keep on uh, right here. And we're just going to let the time run fast. I think we're pretty hidden from these from these guys because of these two buildings. So I think we're probably not going to have to defend ourselves here. But every time we, they come in range, we're going to hear these guys call out. Until it gets to... Okay, so they're coming this way. And... This is why I want to get rid of these two buildings or at least get other defenses here because I can't shoot them right now. And normally I'd be able to shoot them if they get within the, this radius that I have here, right? So if I let this go, they're going to get in here. And as soon as they get in range, I can start shooting. But I should have been able to shoot a lot for a lot uh, sooner than that. But it's okay. Like I said, the first hordes are nothing, so it's fine. Operator. All right, I'm going to get these two groups out to go and do this, and I'm going to leave the civilians to, to continue working, continue breaking down stuff. They're going to work on their own schedule when, when it gets light outside. Now, we just saw a horde incoming, infected incoming, and if we see them enter a building, it will put an icon on that building to let, us, to let me know as a player, like, my guy saw infected go into that building. Um, so if I ever see anybody go in there, I know to avoid that unless it's really weak or I have a good amount of uh, weapons and then I can, um, you know, then I can clear it out during the day, which is generally going to be a little easier, a little safer than clearing it out at night. All right. So I'm just going to keep scavenging in this area. And then I, you can see my guys are starting to break this building down too, gathering those resources, which is really conveniently located right next to my HQ. This night was easy, but there are sure to be some infected around here. We should build some defenses before the next nightfall. Yeah, we could build a watchtower, but it's not that important. Agree. Let's build a wooden tower. Not right now, anyway. It's not that important yet. We're going to have a good amount of metal, actually. Chief, there's no signs of smoke. It's coming out of a building. I think there might be some people there. I yep. recommend we go and investigate. Yep, so there's going to be a lot of these little events that are going to pop up. A lot of places to look at. Some people will start calling us once we start, you know, making chatter on the radio more often. People will start calling in on us uh, and uh, random events and stuff will start occurring as well. So this is a, a scripted event. It, it, you're always going to get this, uh, the smoke in the house, and then you have to go and it's kind of trying to motivate you to get a little bit further away from your HQ. Oftentimes the smoke in the house is actually much further away than this. This is really close. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and go to it right now. It's usually a lot closer than that. Um, I don't want to make another squad because I really want people to break things down, but we're going to have a lot of metal. And so I'm thinking instead of a wooden tower, although I'm pretty sure this thing is not going to go away until I build a wooden one, uh, we can go in over here and it gives me the option to build a wooden tower for 10 wood or a metal tower for five wood and 15 metal. So the metal tower has a lot more HP than the wooden tower, but for the early game, the wooden tower is sufficient to help and defend. So I could put this wooden tower right here. 
would give me vision over here and kind of cover that gap of uh, where they're coming in at. Uh, but it doesn't it doesn't really matter to be honest because like the first couple hordes like I said are are not that big of a deal. I'm gonna place it here anyway just to kind of cover that gap so I can start shooting a little earlier. Uh, so we'll we'll place that there and then we can assign workers to it if there are any available. Since there aren't, I can pull workers off of other projects to make them available. Uh, we have a lot of people cutting down these trees and I kind of want to keep them doing that. Uh, the metal, same thing. Seven people gathering the metal, pretty good too. Uh, and then as we go, I have to start thinking about where I want to fence off. If you make a really big fence, it's going to take you a long time to build it. Chief, Hang on. we found some survivors. They've been living in terrible conditions for the last few years. We could bring them in, but will we be able to feed them? So this is the, the crux of it, right? Kind of like your frost punk decision making. Do you bring in more people, which is great for labor? Or you say, no, I can't afford it because, well, I can't, like I can't feed them. I have to be able to get food. The more people I get, the more food I have to make sure I'm getting, um, and, and, and hanging on with. Now they're going to travel here on their own. If it, if nightfall happens, they'll just hide in the nearest building. If there's infected in there, they'll die. <laughs> so, you know, you don't want that to happen, but that's, I haven't seen that. Uh, I haven't seen that happen except for the very first time I played. So uh i've went, i've went through probably like 10 starts in this game right now to really get a feel for like how to start and uh the do's and don'ts of it at all of it all and i haven't seen that happen since the very first time i started so it may not be such a big deal i'm hearing shots okay so we went into this house to search it there's infected in here right they're hanging out in this building so we're of course going to shoot and since we're armed we're ready to rock with that so we have to clear them out first and uh and then scavenge there's a chance to get wounded, of course. None of them did, thankfully. Uh, and especially if it's a larger horde and we're caught by surprise, we can Clear. definitely get wounded or just killed right on the spot there. So uh, it's uh, definitely a risk. All right, so we're breaking these down. Now, in addition to breaking down buildings, I should start to adapt some of them for living space, right? And this would be a really good warehouse, but it's also kind of close. I like the idea, though, of having farms right here. And having a warehouse and cooking and all sorts of things here. Probably have, probably have this be the cookhouse. Seems like a pretty good fit for it. And then, of course, the farm, the pharmacy would be uh, an interesting warehouse as well. Very big building that pharmacy is. Uh, but to get living situations, to get living quarters going. Um, how about? Remember, we have to be able to defend the building that we choose for this too. I could probably, I could probably do this one. I, I want to break this building, but I don't really want to break this building. To be honest, I don't know. Like maybe we'll keep this. Maybe the towers will be sufficient from this side, and then we could just, you know, HQ can focus on this direction. I generally don't like that idea from the experience I already have playing this, but um, I'm kind of feeling like I want to break the rules a little bit here. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, how about for, for this one here? I, I want to make all this farmland is what I'm hoping to do, um, but it's, it's really difficult to do that. You have to have a lot of tools, and so I'm hoping for research we can get that done for research. This is the, this is the technology tree. We've got medicine, communications, chemistry, arms, production, construction, and food. I do hope to see these expanded because there's not that much stuff in them. Uh, but in order to research these, you need to have a research facility and you also need scientific materials to start. It's a little vague on what you can, what you need for that. But generally what we're looking for is a school or a library. Or in this case, since it's a college town, there's plenty of educational places because you got scientific materials here, 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 right? This, this is a university. There's going to be a lot of uh, scientific materials all over the place. But in general, in most of the maps that you're going to load, there's going to at least going to be some kind of school or a library in the area. And if there isn't on that map, they'll generate something for you, like at least one. Um, but in this case, we're going to be able to unlock lots of technology. The thing is, though, a lot of these buildings are very large. So you think, hey, this is easier because you have lots of, you know, scientific stuff all over the place for you. And while that is true, we have also a huge building to search. It takes a lot longer to search those giant, giant buildings as well. So keep that in mind as, uh, as, as well. But I'm actually really close to these university buildings right over here. Interesting. So this is teaching facility, right? Findable scientific resources, which we definitely want to get because tools like i said before are really hard to get i'm fine i find it no start have i ever had an abundance of tools 
uh, like these basic tools. And you need basic tools to make farms, to like to make fields, uh, to grow food. And so like you're at There's this, you're going to be at this point where you're like, man, I have not uh, managed to, here we go. We got some ammo and a gun. Cool. Um, you're going to get to this point where uh, these guys actually got four canned food and there's still more in there. There's, we know that there's uh, ammo in there right now. If you're wondering what happens if they fill up and they're still searching, they'll know it's in there and uh, that's fine. And then they can come back and just grab it. They don't have to search for it. So it's not a waste of time. So let's go back over and get that now. But I think, uh, yeah. And then these guys filled up. So they, they went over there and then they're going to come back because there's more canned food and they know it and more ammunition too. So they'll do this automatically as well. You don't have to tell them, you know, click it and tell them to do that. Okay, so, so far scavenging has been pretty good. I didn't build the tower like they asked for. And um, I think I could probably assign that now. We'll go ahead and have five people do that. I don't know if they have enough time to do it, but we'll have five people do that. And then since we just found additional weapons, we can probably get another squad for at night. Because more squad means more bullets flying in the air towards our enemies, right? Uh, we do have 13 units of, I don't want to say crates of ammo, but... I don't really know what the unit on ammo is. It's, it's not 14 shots. It's, you know, they use a certain amount of ammo every time. Attack speed, 0.6 per second. Magazine capacity, 25 out of 25. Yeah. And I, I don't know how much, like how this translates. Uh, it says it right here. Crates of magazines used in firearms. One crate equals 100 bullets. So I have 1,400 bullets. That's a lot. But it, we're going to use it. <laughs> we're going to use it. Don't worry. The, the horrors do get pretty big eventually. And you will use it. So again, there's another one of the situations, uh, and they're probably, they can see some out of their they're room. probably going to attack this because it's a pending structure. So it is something that we've added. It's part of our base. So they will probably attack this. So to help get rid of this, uh, to help uh, okay. defend this, I'm going to add another squad. So my third squad has three All weapons. Right. Yep. So we have, we have three sets of handguns. This is good. Okay. So I'm going to control click each of these guys, get all three squads. I'm going to move over to here. You do exit from the same side of the building every time. So if I ever want to like rapidly response to this side, I'll have to go around the building to do that. They don't use like a back door or anything. I kind of wish they would because there's the, especially apartment complexes like this. There are multiple doors. Let's we'll see if we can. Yeah, see, this is the visibility problem I was talking about earlier. But if I'm outside, they're going to go after me, not the building. And then we can just get in the building right now. There we go. That'll protect us while we're in the building and we take care of them that way. Let's do it. All right. So I'm going to get one squad to just kind of hang out over here. And a lot of times I can prevent them from attacking my buildings by just showing up. They will always go after people that they see out in the open before they go after structures. So if they're attacking a tower and I pop out there to say hi, even if I don't shoot them, a lot of times they'll, they'll stop what they're doing and they'll chase me instead. And so I find that tactically I can get around a lot of these, uh, you know, vision blind spots and stuff by just kind of showing my face real quick that's a lot of them yep that's a lot of them let's let's bring this back yeah they're gonna come after me right now uh real quick let's make another squad there's these are all just melee but if they get on top of us we're gonna want them okay let's shoot them and we'll try to kite them Move back, move back, move back. Okay, good. And then we're waiting. We, we know there's a whole bunch over here. So what I want to do, like I want to draw them in so I can get rid of them. We can start clearing this area out so they're not quite so thick in here. Um, and then if they want to come after me, they're going to have to spawn from farther away. Oh, I probably shouldn't get far enough away from my HQ. If they come from the other side, I want to be able to protect it. All right, you know what? We will just go in anyway. It's fine. We'll just go in here anyway. There are some infected around yeah, see, they're coming from this side too. So we want to make sure that we're ready for that. Um, I don't think I'm going to need the melee fighters. Um, if I do have the melee fighters, all I would be using them for is making sure that these guys stay in range. So I could be doing this. Yeah, I can't want to go back and forth. So I'm just going to get in. These guys here are coming on this side. I don't want them to attack the building. So I can pop out. And they'll, they'll again, they'll come after people if they see people. So instead of attacking my building, they'll come after these guys instead. Let's do it. And that just buys me more time. There we go. 
the gunshots will draw nearby hordes to come and investigate. So they're probably going to come all the way now, I would think. Because I just made a whole bunch of noise. I'll just pop my head out here and say hi to them really quick. I'm over here. You hear my footsteps? Here I am. Here I am. Come get me. Don't get my tower. Yep. And now we can start shooting them in that gap. There we go. Perfect. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and disband that group. I don't need that. And I think I want to start uh, making sure I can get more people above ground, right? There's still quite a few people that are stranded below ground right now. So I'm trying to think of my base and sort of like how I want to expand it in the future. And I'm going... I, I think I want these buildings to have other purposes, like a research center, cookhouse, warehouse. I don't want this to be residential. I can probably, I think I will keep this building. I'm against my better judgment. I think I'm going to keep this building and I'm going to adapt it to be instead uh, a shelter. We're going to make this a shelter. This will be living quarters for 32 people. And that will be all I need for now until my, until my, uh, my colony grows. That'll be kind of all I need for now. So we're going to have 10 of our civilians working on that job. And then uh, we have five working on the tower. And then there will obviously be another two that will end up being posted at the tower. There we go. Okay. Chief, the survivors that we took in, they have some important info that we could use. They speak of various kinds of infected animals that they encountered and other groups of survivors too. But they've lost people recently. It'll take some time for them to integrate. Let me find some jobs and shelter for them. Okay, cool. Let them rest. Okay, let them rest. Sir, we just found a car that looks drivable. Let's try to make it run again. Ah, there we go. First car. I I, inter I interrupted the camera movement. Uh, yeah, cool. All right. Okay. Cars are really helpful. <clears throat> really, really good. So uh, we'll investigate that with this squad since it's closest. Uh, Yeah, uh, who's who's this? This is the infection free zone. Please respond. Hello? To all fall. The infection is in the seek a host and rebuild. It's like how do you not know this is the uh the recording that you know you heard to leave, right? Is somebody there? Building clear. This the infection is in decline. Seek this and rebuild. Sure, hello. Hello? <laughs> Please respond. Over. All right, I'm going to stop this. Uh, switch channel. Chief, this is the same transmission we received before. Uh-huh. But the signal is even weaker. Our walkie-talkies are not powerful enough for long-range communication. We have to build a large antenna. A local library or university would be a good place to search for information on how to make it work. We're on the move. Very good. So now it's telling me that it wants me to uh, to look for, like scientific stuff right so we want to go ahead and do that uh now that i have a squad uh actually i need to go back to the hq for this yeah let's take this squad over we're gonna have this squad go and search for the car now that i have a car i feel better about going after science stuff it takes a very long time to gather science stuff usually although this building being smaller is a really good thing we're gonna hit this first um usually takes a long time to gather that stuff and so i like to have a car because they're gonna sit over there for a long time Generally, they're very far away, you know, because I started in Mount Pleasant, we're going to be very close to educational stuff anyway, since it's a college town. But, uh, yeah, <clears throat> depending on when the infection happened, you know, if the infection happened, well, you know, let's, let's say everything went to shit in July. Well, then Mount Pleasant's probably not going to be that populated because it's kind of a ghost town in the summer. Uh, but if it happened in October, or September, we're screwed. <laughs> we're just screwed. That's just how it goes. It's like, all right, cool, whatever. So this building's ours now. It's adding new housing. And so we get all of our civilians that were underground can now uh, freely come on up here and uh, they can join us on the on the surface. Very nice. Uh, in the wooden tower, we want them to be able to use weapons, but we have to actually have guns for them to use. So in the meantime, I'm going to put these guys to work since there's not really much they can do. And how much building resources do we have? 55, 98 bricks. Okay. I want to start setting up my first brick wall. All right. I want to start walling this off so that they can't come from this direction all the time. They're going to have to come from different directions. Uh, I'm much much easier to defend coming down this little line of sight right here. 
uh there's a lot of line of sight issues here but we're gonna end up breaking down most of these buildings and turning it into farms anyway so it doesn't really matter long term i think over here uh how do i want to do this i think i think the first wall I could put a brick wall and i love how it's gridless oh, i love gridless stuff i think i'll take the first brick wall and build it right here make them come from a different direction if you will they kind of come about like this i think right about there it'll be our first brick wall and then we're going to have that wall extend i think out this way at least i think this is probably a good way to go now that's a lot of bricks we're also going to need a way out generally too uh for cars bringing things in this is a nice road to come down i think this main one right here is pretty good so we'll probably break this building down and put a gate right here i think that's that's what we're gonna do actually not probably we're, we're, we're going to do that so i'm gonna make this brick wall go all the way out to uh, i can't go through the trees you have to cut them down first uh which i i generally like it's not like it's gonna just replace them right like i can't do this because there's a pole there uh so let's bring this uh say about here and then we're going to in this spot once this house is broken down in this spot we'll go ahead and put a gate i think that's good a good idea uh, so now we have a lot of stuff to build it's going to take a bit to set up that that wall but this wall is going to basically make it to where the infected are coming from directions that we can defend from namely this side i want them i want to encourage them to come from this side so much this will help speed up our scavenging search done and we can run over the infected orders and clear okay we have a car, which is great. Well, gonna see. Like he, like he said, if we get on the road, we can travel a lot faster. Uh, if you go off road, it definitely slows you down. Although it looks like it's having a hard time navigating with. Yeah, that's weird how it's doing that with the roads. Uh, okay, I want them to go to here to start looking at scientific stuff. So go on this way, and work here. It's gonna be an all night thing. So if you're if we see the horde, we can always get away with the car now. Uh, but you're going to be there for a while trying to find us some science stuff. The wall is going to take a year to build. It takes a very long time to build this stuff. Uh, especially if we don't have a whole lot of bricks to break down. But since I'm breaking down a lot of these buildings, we're going to get the bricks from the buildings. We're not going to have to go very far to, uh, to get the materials for them. Got to keep in mind also that all these brick walls serve as buildings that are attached to our settlement so the undead the infected if you will will attack them too and i found that they're kind of stupid i found that they would rather attack a standing wall than to go around it <laughs> so uh, i'm gonna probably keep my nose out here and just kind of make sure they see me so they end up going after me more than they go after my stuff so i really don't want to lose supplies and stuff for that and so that's gonna be my first was i'm shaping up to be a very big colony right here but uh, I like to think ahead and, uh, you know, prepare since all my supplies for that wall are right close by. I think it'll be pretty easy since we have a lot of buildings here. We just have to, of course, make sure that all these buildings are actually clear. And so that's why I'm doing a lot of searching of the nearby buildings first. Generally, you should do the nearby buildings first. They're easier to get to. Okay. There you go. I've said that all the obvious stuff has been said. Now let's... Uh, Oh, wonderful. It's, it's a like moon it's night. The cool. sky is perfectly clear. It's almost as bright as the day. There should be no infected on the street tonight. Excellent. Uh, something happened, though. Crap. Yeah, we can work tonight. What happened here? We're in a building full of infected, and they cut off our escape. We barricaded ourselves in the basement, but we can't go out now. Can you send a squad to fight them and help us? So, I'm going to do this. I'm going to send the squad to help them. But I'm going to have to tell them to fight for themselves and then hope that they can get out. I, I don't know. Like, I have a bug and I'm hoping that doesn't this doesn't happen. I'm going to go with wait for help, actually. So, they're going to be trapped in there. Um, it, they shouldn't want to be out tonight, but they are. It's, it's apparently not as much of a moon night as I thought it was. Uh, okay, so we need to take some people off of jobs so I can make another squad. And these guys are not going to be well armed because they don't have they don't have any weapons. I'm going to bring this squad back. You can see right now we're going to have a 
Yeah, they're going to hide in that building. So I need to have these guys... Uh, I need to rescue them. And like I said, there's a bug with my game where if you tell them to hide, they'll stay hidden forever. Like, you just lose them. Um, I'm hoping that doesn't hit here. But uh, when I say fight for yourself, I, I can get them out. But if I ever say hide, uh, they they never come back. I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna see whether or not the recent patch that just happened uh, a little while ago um, does anything with that. So we have this car. We're going to get out of the car. And I'm going to have all these teams go in and try to rescue these guys. So let's have them go in. Rescue. Why are you staying here? Get in there. Go, go, go. There's a lot of them in there, dude. That's a really strong horde. The, the redness of the circle gives you an idea of how many there are. Okay, so that did fix the problem. Excellent. Cool, I got my squad back. So we'll just clear these guys out now. It's okay to do this at night. Because it's a bright night anyway. If you click individual squad members, you can see if anybody's wounded. Looks like we're fine. We have a lot of people in here, so that makes sense. Okay, so with everybody going out, since it's a moon night, I'm just going to scavenge every building in the area everybody's just gonna go pick a building and go and we're gonna get a whole bunch of stuff hopefully okay we have a horde spotted is it okay they're out here uh they're, they're going in the building so at least now we've seen them go in this building and we know that we need to clear that out i can do that during the day too it's fine let's mark this building for deconstruction and we'll mark i think this building for deconstruction as well Get, gives us again the, the supplies we need to make our wall so the car does have storage you can see that we're storing stuff in there and when they're done searching if they find things they'll automatically go back to their car and they'll unload and then go back in so i like that part about cars too right, we'll go back to hq with you uh no we have we have space available let's just keep going that way you guys are all full yep i want to clear that horde out but i'm gonna wait till late any light time anyway all right so i've been scavenging and stuff all day and uh i want to go ahead and clear these guys out before the nighttime hits so we're gonna have all three of these teams here all gonna to get together and they're all gonna go into this building at once and take them out and it looks like the door is on this side so we'll gather here we all go in at the same time because this looks like it's a pretty big horde and uh let's go Tack, tack, tack. There we go. And so far, nobody's wounded. Seems pretty good. So, overwhelming force. That's how we protect ourselves, with overwhelming force. So, I'll get you guys back in the car. And I think I actually want another squad. Like, a unarmed squad would be nice to have. Uh, the wall is done up to here. So, we're building out pretty quickly. And, of course, we're breaking down these buildings and stuff as well to, to pay for it. Um, go put you there and get you guys back in here. I don't really think I need this many squads, to be honest, but it's fine. If we, uh, if we have to deal with a horde tonight, then we'll need to have muscle. So they're coming from this side. So what we want to encourage, we want to encourage them to come from this side. Because I have better visibility on this side. So we'll exit right here just to kind of encourage them to come after me here. And I can even kite them with the car. So I can come over here and be like, hey, look, guys. I'm right here. See me with the car. I'm shooting you. And I can choose to run them over too. Um, if I hit them with the car, it will do it will do damage to them, but it will also do damage to the vehicle as well. So my vehicle will lose a little bit of hit points when I hit them. So it's not a great thing to use, but if you have a situation like this, where they are coming in from every direction and they are coming in in big numbers, it might be worth it to ram them with your car, which I think at this point I'm probably going to do. So I'm going to ram these guys with the car right through here. We're just gonna drive this direction and you're just gonna barrel right through them like this. And then what I can do is just keep them in the area, right? So I can go back and forth here. And see, they're taking down that tower, but I don't care much about that tower. The tower's fine. Uh, I wasn't really using it much anyway, but if I do show my face over here, they will pull off that and they're gonna come after me. So I'm just gonna use the car to keep them busy, keep them interested in me instead of the buildings. Of course, I can just barrel through them again, but it'll, you know, hurt the vehicle. The vehicle will run poorly now because of that condition. And then I can use 
more advanced tools to fix the car. But I know there are other cars in the game. I know there are many other cars on the map, so I don't care about damaging this vehicle. All right, let's go ahead and head this way. We'll shoot and uh, let's find out where the next horde is. Next horde's over here. So same thing. We want to kind of come out of the building, see if we can't get them to pay attention to me. Come, come look at me. I'm over here. Hey, assholes, right here, right here. Come get me. Just to kind of keep them off the building a little bit longer before I jump into it. There we go. Perfect. All right, anything else? Still midnight. We got a lot of night left ahead of us. They're coming in. The fast, the bigger we get, the more people we get, the more noise we're making during the day. They're going to hear it. They're going to come on out here and they're going to check it out and say, wow, there's a lot of stuff changing over here. They are, but they can't see us through that wall. They're f we're fine. They're actually going to retreat for the daytime anyway. Okay, cool. So I'm going to go ahead and disband almost every squad except one. The squad is going to get back in the car. And uh, we're going to head back over here. I wanted to get the research stuff done before the end of this video with you guys. But it's taken a bit of time to do. So I probably will end up editing a lot, of, a little bit of this footage just to try to get there. Uh, you know, before the end of the video, I want to get to research. And I noticed the condition is bad. So it's not going to travel as fast. Still way faster than walking. But it's not quite as fast. Sir, the people have reported hearing a lot of noises coming from underground. They're afraid that it could be infected moving through the sewers and tunnels. We need to bolster our defenses and be ready to attack from within, too. Yep, I know. We'll be ready. There's not really anything I can do about that. Like, I'm only I'm already doing everything I can to defend. I, I don't really have many options remaining to defend, so meh, I guess. Um, why don't we take See, this one has a 32, 30, 45. So let's tear this building down. We'll keep this one. Uh, that could be useful to us later. Um, and then this one here, I think we're going to turn it into another residence. We can adapt this to another shelter. That'll store 139 people. That is, that is some seriously high amounts of people there. I don't need that much. Um, what about a warehouse? It has huge storage implications to have this building. So, I mean, it's just, it's nuts. I, I really think I should turn this into something else, something a bit more useful to me, but I need to get the research and I also need to, um, you know, examine more buildings and, and get out there and, and see more buildings too, because uh, without doing that, I'm never going to discover certain things. And there's something you can discover in a house, in a, in any building really. And that's seeds. You want to get to seeds. It's a really, really good idea to get seeds because seeds allow you to farm. And until you can farm or you get chickens and stuff and you can get a, a barn, you're dependent on this process of looking through houses and getting canned food and stuff. You're dependent on that process. And I don't like being dependent on that process. I like having my own thing going on, which is, you know, why I'm getting ready to wall everything off. And then I'll start getting towers put up, which I can probably start doing that now. Yeah, I could start putting towers up. Oh. There it is. There's our seeds. Maybe we could use this to start cultivating the land again. Yep. Okay. Bring that in. Oh my God! Three tools. We should have a place where we can cook meals for our citizens. This will make our people much happier too. Oh my God! That's amazing. There's three. T okay. sets. Let's build a cookhouse. Oh my God! There's a lot of tools in that building. Wow! I was just saying it's hard to find tools. That building's a jackpot building. Wow. Okay, cool. Uh, do we have any scientific stuff yet? Reporting. We have one. Wow, that building was... See how long it takes to get just one? Lame, huh? Let's do it. Real lame. Let's do it. But we got to do it. Now I have this car. I'm going to go over here We're on the move. with this squad and get those tools. Uh, that's going to be huge. Okay, so since we have seeds and... Well, we don't have them yet, but we, ha we have knowledge of them. Uh, I can now make a field as well as a cookhouse. And I'm thinking of adapting one of these buildings as a cookhouse. So a cookhouse having 40 workers is huge. 31 workers is more appropriate, I think. Uh, 90, 46. Since we're farming here, we could make one of these buildings the cookhouse. How about this one? This one would be okay. It's right next to the gate, though. So if they bust through, they could 
they could be damaging the cookhouse. If they bust through the gate, I have bigger problems. But yeah. Uh yeah, I tell you what, we're gonna make this one here the cookhouse. And then because of that, we can now have the fields put in. And so I'm gonna have and I'm not gonna have a whole lot of um uh resources for this right now, but I'm gonna take a field. It takes two tools to make one field. It's pretty expensive. Um, but I'm hoping that with this building laid out here, I was going to put the farms right here. I only wait for this building to get cleared out first, I think. And I'll put the farms right, right here. Although if we build them now, we could start cultivating them right now, wouldn't we? Yeah, it doesn't really matter where it is as long as I can, as long as I can cultivate it right now. I think so. So I can, I can drag this out and maybe do like four fields right here in the beginning. Yeah, like this. I think that's fine. Um, we'll take, let's say, uh, how many people are working on this? Five. Where's like the big source of labor? Is it all the wall? I think it's pretty much everybody using the wall here. So bring this segment down to one. Yeah, down to one, down to one and one on each of these fields so that we can have these fields built as soon as possible. And of course we need the tools and everything for that, but that's what this car is for this car they're gonna go ahead and get the tools that are in there and the seeds and everything and that's gonna be great to have that stuff done now we have one isn't it oh do we not bring it back it's it's in the car isn't it Ready for action. yeah it's still in the car okay Reporting. so we need to get back to the car Let's do it. it won't let me unpause why cool. man there's still six seeds in there that's crazy good On my way. yeah 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 canned food plus the seeds there. and we'll be able to bring everything back in this car this trip right now going there. that's Ready awesome all right any other v uh let's try this building let's get these other buildings done too and then we want to start tearing down other things for farming sake so i think this building can go as well so we'll mark that for demolition and then this Receive is done so let's bring that back Roger. and i like how we just park right here I've had maps where it was really strange parking and I, I actually had one map where the car wanted to go all the way around the building HQ and then park. So like imagine this road, it was almost exactly like this. Imagine this road continues and then goes around, right? And the building is, is, is right here in the center of that little square. The car wanted to go like this. It would go all the way around the building and then it would park right here. It's like, I have to park on this side of the street and no, I will not do a middle street U-turn. It's just like, I'm going to go all the way around and it was, it's, it's silly. So I, when you, when, it, when that's happening, you can press the leave car button at any time and they will just leave the car at that point. So I'd often have to do that, but I really, I really like that map too, but it's okay. Chief, we just found an assault rifle. Oh, brilliant. Come in handy against large hordes. Let's just not waste too much ammo on nothing. Not only is the rate of fire better here, so DPS is Use much better, caution. but we also, oh, I can't actually get that because I have all these tools. We need a workspace Operator. where we can experiment and re-engineer all the pre-pandemic technology. Yeah. We could store all the books there too. Yeah, yeah. Let's build a research center yep. and assign the most technical minds there. So the research center is something that we definitely want. And I'm thinking it could be this building. 20 researchers seems pretty good as a good number for getting things really quickly. I like that. I like that. It's 20 researchers is great. We'll make that the research center. Okay. Let's do this. Okay. So I know where another source of, I, I, the source of tools is coming in right here, but I now know another source of the, the assault rifle right there too. We have to bring that in and that should be it for, that should be it for the seeds. So we have a lot of seeds now. So when these fields are done being built, as they've, you know, as soon as they've given the tools, uh, this one doesn't have it delivered. This one doesn't have it delivered. Neither does this. I, I think the basic tools are in storage though, right? Yeah, we have seven of them. We need eight total, but I think, I think we have there's seven left. I'm wondering if we haven't delivered all of them yet. So one of these fields is not going to build, but the rest of them will. It's going to be really good. I like that. Uh, okay. How about this? I'm going to have you go back and defend car go get the assault rifle and then we are ready to defend the base once more but that is i think gonna be if you guys want to see more of this game please let me know in the comments i think i've reached the end of 
of my time with this game for you at least for this preview look at infection free zone there is a lot more to this there's also more characters to meet there's a lot more uh potential issues to run into a lot more hordes to destroy they are totally gonna follow this car <laughs> they're definitely i'm bringing them right in i'm gonna lead them to the to my home that's what i'm doing right now oh crap maybe i maybe i traveled far, fast enough where they don't follow me On my way. i think i probably did yeah so there's a lot more to this and it gets it gets much deeper and uh you can you can send expeditions for example to uh neighboring areas so this is my whole tile that i'm working with which is a pretty good size map you see how much we're like that's a pretty good amount of play space man and every single building in here is something that you can search through and has supplies and potentially has a character in there uh but also just expeditions outside are possible as well so anyway let me know what you think of the game and i'll uh maybe see you in the next video Bye bye